Hey guys, my name is Cadroth, and today I'm going to be going over with you guys Plug Suit, aka the Chaldea Combat Uniform, the one that has order change on it that allows you to change up your party. So you're probably wondering right now, Cad, why are you making a video on this? Because you literally have one talking about all the Mystic Codes. Well, yeah, I do. But I feel the need to clear the air here a little bit and sort of defend Plug Suit, because I keep seeing people talk about it all over the place. Twitter, Reddit, Twitch, you name it. Any community, I keep seeing people say, yeah, but I don't want to use plug suit. Yeah, but plug suit just is, is too long. Plug suit is bad. So we're going to go through plug suit with you guys, and you guys can tell me if you guys think plug suit's bad. Because I think it deserves its day in court. All right, so what is plug suit? AKA Chaldea Combat Uniform. So Plug Suit has for a long time been one of the earliest Mystic Codes you guys can get in the game. It's been available pretty much, I believe, since the London release, where we got three new Mystic Codes that differentiated from the original, since everybody kind of was able to level the original Mystic Code very easily. And <laughs> since then, it's been one of the hardest ones to level in that regard, just in terms of experience requirement. But the reality here is it's not. It's actually one of the easiest to level. And there's a reason why. So to give you guys an idea about why that is, let's go through its kit. As you guys can see here, the first part of Plug Suit is just a party-wide attack up for one turn by 30%. Now again, this could be a really, really nice effect. It affects everyone in the party. So if you're ever trying to, say, get off a Noble Phantasm with multiple characters or trying to do some sort of card chain with multiple characters, basically Reinforce All is going to work on everyone. It's just attack up. It's not specific to a card type. It's not NP damage, so it's not specific to NPs. It's a very versatile, nice, honest, good buff that you guys can get out of this. So it, that's going to represent your offense. A lot of people here look at Gander and they think, ah, you know, this is kind of a weird sort of defensive skill to have in a Mystic Code. In fact, when I was first playing the game, I looked at this and thought like, no, oh, you know, I'm, I've been using the OG Mystic Code for years. Why then, you know, would I ever want to switch to something that just stuns? Because that's just delaying the inevitable. The truth here is delaying the inevitable sometimes delays it indefinitely. And that's kind of one of the reasons why Gander here can be really strong. Hilariously enough, this was actually bugged on NA for years and now has been fixed here, I'd say semi recently. So you're still good. You don't have to worry about that, that bug anymore. But basically it just had a chance to fail where again on NA, it only had a 100% chance to stun the enemy rather than 500% chance. A 500% chance is basically going to hit everything unless it's immune somehow. So again, that was one of the issues that we had with an A specifically with Gander, but Gander as a whole can definitely buy you time. It can end up sort of stopping that enemy from popping off on the turn that it really needs to, or again, just delay its NP until you can get a cooldown back to basically help protect the party. So again, Gander is something where at face value, it doesn't look very strong, but it's actually incredibly strong if used correctly. It's also one of the reasons why you guys have started to see, basically they do a lot of like mental immunities and stuff on bosses is partially due to stuns and charms because they're tired of their bosses getting charm locked and stun locked. So that is gonna be one of the reasons why you see that all the time. So a little bit less of a use for that, but still a really, really good survival skill, even though it doesn't look that way. The creme de la creme, the, the absolute reason to use Plug Suit is going to be its third skill. That is going to be Order Change. And Order Change is 100% an amazing skill. This is probably one of the most powerful skills in the game because it's one of the only ways to change your party makeup. So you guys are aware that you normally have the three people on the front line and you can't necessarily access the people on the back line of your party. So why do you take them? Maybe they're just back there for bonding or yada, yada, yada. Or maybe they're back there in case your, you know, attempt, your, your composition fails. And that way they can rotate in. But Plug Suit allows you to rotate that party composition without killing someone. Something that Chen Gong, a rash, and anyone with a scapegoat type skill like Kiritsugu can't say. So it's definitely a really, really nice thing. Now on JP, we have units like Miss Crane that are capable of doing that sort of thing. But this is still super powerful and you don't need to take a Miss Crane just to achieve this effect. And again, this has been in the game since pretty much its third month. It's a really, really, really good effect. 
So the reason that it ends up being good is because not only does this allow you maybe a chance at more survivability, let's say you rotate Mash in and she taunts the enemy and takes a Noble Phantasm for you. Let's say you bring someone else in and they invuln the party, like Merlin or Janu, and all of a sudden the party is able to live. And that's just the defensive applications. But the reality here is that this is one of the premium ways to add both damage output and charge potential in your party. In fact, if you were to look at any other Mystic Code, a lot of people would sit there and say, well, Reinforce All is nice, but it's only 30% and I would prefer something to maybe help the one unit that I have dealing a lot of damage pop off. Here's the way to think about order change, guys. With order change, I can add in a new unit, and that new unit can literally provide and make up for the difference between the two Mystic Codes. In fact, this is why Plug Suit is considered to be the strongest Mystic Code in the game, is because no other Mystic Code gives you access to an entire other unit. Because what's more powerful than a unit? Another unit. That's the only thing. The only way you're going to get more offensive capability out of your party is by doing something like this. So it's really, really nice. It allows you to stretch your party beyond its normal limits. This is what allows a lot of people to be able to three turn in the right circumstances. Maybe their unit isn't a very good looper. Maybe they just don't have a whole lot of charge. Now you bring in somebody that actually can supplement that, somebody that can provide a lot of charge or provide a lot of damage, a waiver, a reigns, an Oberon now on JP. Maybe it could be just any other support. Maybe you've got like a double Scotty setup, but your unit sort of struggles with both charge and refundability. You can end up bringing someone like Bride or Castoria in to help that out. So there's a whole lot of applications to this and it doesn't just deal with damage. But that's kind of why I'm saying this is a really good, strong, powerful Mystic Code. So why did I just say it was one of the easiest to level? Because a lot of the time, you're going to find yourself in situations where it's the only way to three turn something. It's the only way to get through a node efficiently and possibly remotely quickly without, you know, getting into six, seven, 12 turns, you name it, right? So allowing you to have this order change somehow just allows you to drastically speed up and increase the capabilities of the call. Due to that, due to the fact that there are going to be times that you're just stuck using it, Plug Suit is one of those Mystic Codes that just sort of auto levels itself. You are going to be forced to use it at times because it's just going to be your best option by far. And as a result of that, a lot of people, especially over years and years of playing the game, have Chaldea Combat Uniform at rank 10. And this is why when you hear people saying, I don't want to use Plug Suit, it's one of the reasons. A lot of people will just tell you, I don't want to use it until the new one comes out. Well, what's the new one, you ask? Here you go. Decisive Battle Chaldea Uniform. So this one comes out a little bit further down the line. Again, it's a new version. It's sort of our Lost Belt version of the Plug Suit Mystic Code. You guys can see the result here is that instead of having 30% attack up for the party, you get 20% attack up now, but you also get 20% in P damage. So this is both better and worse. It's going to give you even more damage when you're in peeing, but it's not necessarily going to be as much in the case of, hey, I don't want to MP, maybe I was just trying to pop off with my cards. So that is going to make this a little bit more tailored to, again, Noble Phantasm, but that's kind of always been Plug Suit's strong point. Its second skill also is going to trade that Gander and that survivability for basically a 3000 HP heal on a 10 turn cooldown. It also has a chance to remove any offensive debuffs, so basically anything that could stop you from dealing good damage. In that sense, it's really good, but I'd say at least for like, a lot of content I find that I would have actually just preferred Gander. So it's still a nice ability to have, but to me, this is actually one of the weaker parts of the new version of Plug Suit. And then as always, it just gets the standard order change, which we've already discussed is one of the most broken abilities in the entire game, bar none. So it's really, really a solid choice. And now that this is out on JP, you started to see a lot more people be like, yeah, I'm okay using this. I have no issue, okay? So keep that in mind that that experience argument is a big reason why a lot of people are saying, hey, I don't want to use it. What's the other reason? Well, the other reason that I see a lot of people saying is they go, order change is too slow. I don't like the amount of time it takes. It's cumbersome, it's clunky, and it's really bogged down. 
I'm gonna say this. This is mostly a holdover from like the early years of FGO where our engine was slow, things didn't load properly. Anytime someone, you know, died or the party was swapped, the game tended to take a long time to load in the new asset and stuff like that. This isn't really the case anymore. Even, even on an A where right now as of the recording of this video, we don't have the sort of animation skill speed up, it's, it's still not that bad. Like, yeah, it's clunky, but it's no more clunky than pressing your skills are. And this is where I'd say a lot of people probably get to the truth of it is that they don't want to do more button presses and I'll address that next. But the time factor here isn't a big issue. And I think honestly, NA is probably going to expect to get that skill speed up quality of life probably pretty soon since apparently it's announced that Korea is already getting it. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this before Shisho Fest, but I would say at worst, probably by the end of the year. So again, I don't think the, the speed and the time is an issue, but let me sort of go after that one more time. Why would the speed and the time not be an issue for the majority of you? Even when you're somewhat concerned about it, I'd say the majority of players in this game are some sort of free to play or cheap to play mentality. They maybe aren't the hardest of grinders. They maybe don't have the most apples. They maybe don't have the most robust accounts and have to do a, a ton of button mashing all the time. Obviously, there's going to be times like raid events, hunting quests and lotteries where you're really going to want to farm. But that being considered, in a lot of those cases, I noticed as a lot of people, and this is not a knock against anyone, but a lot of people enter those events, those high octane lucrative farming events with not the greatest sum of apples. And as a result, they can't do that many runs anyways. When your limitation is your refills, your efficiency for materials and drops, you don't care about time. Time ceases to be a thing that you care about. In fact, this is something I'm seeing really promoted very hard in the community right now. Time, time, time. Time is a valuable thing. Watch it fly by as the pendulum swing. <laughs> the whole point is, again, that yeah, it's, it's valuable. You guys should definitely wanna choose things that are faster, but the difference between a couple seconds is not going to kill you. The difference between say, 10 seconds and 20 seconds is significant. The difference between 10 and 30, even more. But the difference between 10 and 12, not really. Yeah, it adds up over time, but let's say you're sitting there grinding during your lotto. Are you watching a TV show? Are you distracted by a significant other or family member talking to you? The second you don't press a button on your screen, you've just lost any time advantage you had. So, Unless you're a robot or you're botting the game, which I'm going to tell you, just don't do that. Your time to clear a node isn't really a big factor. It's more your willingness and your persistence to clear it. That's really going to pay off for the vast majority of people. And even then, even if you have that, a lot of the times you're going to be limited by your resources or your mat efficiency. Those are going to be bigger contributions to your efficiency overall than just the time argument. So again, don't get caught up in the time absolutely is the biggest factor to consider. The speed of the comp absolutely matters. The reason we put the speed in our lotto videos here recently was again that some people did want to know that and we felt like we could put that in the video relatively easy. Again, I had talked to my editors about that and they said, no, no, that's fine. That, that's a super easy thing that we can add. Not because I really wanted to tell you guys, oh, you absolutely should unequivocally 100% care about time more than anything else. But to me, time isn't a big issue and it will certainly be even lessened in the future with that skill speed upgrade. So that's another argument. So the next argument is sort of busyness. It's, it's button presses, it's laziness as a whole. I'm guilty of this. I think we all are. Nobody wants to press more buttons. However, I'll just go ahead and do it when it's sort of the easiest way to clear something. If I am given two choices and choice number one is to use not plug suit and, you know, try to make do with like some sort of like double Castoria looping setup. But I know that that is a huge chance of failing. It can end up in a four and a five turn. Or I have a choice between that or potentially just using plug suit and always being able to three turn. I'm going to choose plug suit every time. The reason why is just going to be that I'd rather not have to take the extra turn. Yeah, it's more button presses, but I think a lot of people sort of discount that failure rate and go like, ah, oh, you know, it, what does that matter? 
Well, you're going to end up pressing more buttons that way too. Keep in mind too, that a lot of these same people are saying, I don't want to have to press a lot of buttons. They're going to end up sort of in a bad situation in the future anyways. Guys, we're already headed towards the, the Buster meta in year six. And the Buster meta with Kayan, Skya, and Oberon is predominantly about skill cooldowns. And so what that does is it makes it so that a lot of your units and their three skills are going to be pressed not only three times, but potentially even two more. So six times in total, okay? That's why I'm saying this is like, yeah, button pressing is a thing. I don't like to do it when I don't have to, but it's not that big of a deal. You guys should definitely say, hey, you know, I'm going to use whatever useful tool I can to help me achieve my goals. Again, it's one thing if you maybe you're short on time in the day and you only have a quick amount of time to farm. It's another thing if your Mystic Code is already maxed out. And it's another thing if maybe just your goals lie elsewhere. Okay, that's fine. The reason I'm telling you guys this is so that, again, people don't get confused and feel like, hey, you know, Chaldea Battle Uniform, Chaldea Combat Uniform, they're bad Mystic Codes. They're not. They're the strongest in the game, bar none. No other Mystic Code gives you that level of party control and capability. No other Mystic Code is going to allow you to do more damage at the moment than these two. That's why they are so strong and they are so good at enabling your account to achieve things that it otherwise wouldn't be able to. So my lesson to you guys here at the end of all of this is going to be, maybe be careful of what you say. Be careful of who's around. Be careful of where you're saying it. Because I've started to see as a lot of new players are beginning to think that these are actually bad mystic codes because all the time they see people saying, ah, I don't want to use it. Ah, I hate using it. Ah, it's too long. It's really not that big of a deal. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. So again, keep in mind, there are going to be people that are going to read those comments and get totally confused by them. So do better about it, I would say, and try to espouse the benefits of plug suit and the combat uniforms and instead say, well, they're really good, but I'd rather prefer to level this or I'd ra or I just don't have a lot of time at the moment. If you guys think about the way you say things, oftentimes it really will turn out for the better. Think on that is what I would say. I hope this was a thought provoking video for you guys today. I'll see you guys for the next one. Later.